So then my friends, now we know a little bit about what an image is and what a container is as well, I'd like to briefly talk about how images are made. So to begin with, images are made up of different layers where each layer essentially adds something else to the image incrementally. So the order of the layers does matter. And typically what we do is start with what's known as a parent image as the first layer in our own image. So this layer typically describes the operating system and the runtime environment of the container that we want. So you could have a parent image which has a specific node version installed like node 17 or 16 on a Linux distribution. And this layer in itself is a Docker image already pre-made so we're just creating a new image on top of that so that's the initial layer normally a parent image which typically includes a lightweight operating system and a runtime environment the next layers that we build on top of that initial one can be anything else that we would add to our image such as copying source code to the image installing dependencies on the image or specifying any initial scripts that need to run etc now we'll talk more about those additional layers later on but for now i just want to focus on this initial parent image layer and how we'd get this parent image so when you work with docker and parent images you'll also be working with something called docker hub which you can find at hub.docker.com now docker hub is basically an online repository of docker images and it's a bit like github but for docker instead and it contains a ton of pre-made parent images that we can use as the first layer in our own images and we can search for and download these pre-made images to our computer if we want to and i'm going to show you how to do that later on but first let's imagine we want to create a new docker image for a project and it needs to run in a node environment well then the initial layer of our image would be a parent node image and we can get that image from docker hub right here so i could just type in node into the search bar and hit enter to search for node images and when we do that we can see this result right here for node which says it's the official image for node as well and by the way you can also see here that there's an image for mongodb as well so that can be downloaded and run as well and there's loads more pre-made images too for things like strappy or wordpress or mysql etc anyway let's have a look at this node image and see how we can download it so first of all on the right we can see how to essentially download this image or rather in docker terms pull the image so we do that by typing this command into a terminal but before we do that if we scroll down a bit we can see all these different tags supported by this node image and these tags are basically different variations of the node image that we can use and they specify a specific node version and also an underlying linux distribution so when we specify we want to use the node image we can add a tag on the end as well to specify which version of node that we want and also which linux distribution it should run on top of now one of those is called alpine which is a really lightweight linux distribution so that's the one that we'll be using but there are also other distributions that we can use as well so we could specify for example node version 17 and alpine and by the way, it's always beneficial to specify a node version to lock that version into your image. Otherwise, it will always grab the latest one and that can change over time, right? So again, when we make our own images, the first layer of those images is normally a parent image like this. And it doesn't have to be a node image. It could be a Python or PHP or Ruby or something else entirely image. But if we were making a node application, it would be the node image that we'd use. So now let's try downloading this node image and running it just as it is. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, copy this command right here, docker pull node. And then I'm gonna open up some kind of terminal and let me just zoom in here and what we're going to do is paste that command in now it doesn't matter where we are in the terminal what directory because it's not going to install that image into this directory docker is going to store it in a special place so i'm going to paste it in docker pull node and then press enter to install that and you can see it's using now the default tag right here which is latest so if we don't specify a tag a specific version of node then it's going to pull in the latest version for us automatically. 
All right then, so once that's downloaded, if you head on over to Docker Hub and go to images, you should be able to see this image right here, node. That's the one we just pulled down. And also this tag right here, latest. Now that's kind of the default tag. And that's because we didn't specify a specific version of Node or Linux distribution. So if we don't do that, it just kind of downloads that default Node image for us instead. And that's gonna include the latest version of Node.js as well. Now, if we hover over this, you can click on run and that's gonna run this image to create a container. Now, remember I said before that this is gonna be used as kind of like the initial layer in our own image. So this parent image right here. However, this in itself is just an image and I said that they can be run as well. So we can run this node image to spin up a container now, which is gonna kind of contain a Linux environment or a Linux distribution and node installed into it, okay? So we can click on this run button right here to do that. Now later on, I am gonna show you how to do this from the command line as well, but for now, let's just run it from here. And when we do that, we get these additional options, but I'm not gonna do anything with those yet. So just run as is. And now it takes us to the containers where we can see this container right here. And it's given this some kind of random name as well. So this container is now running. And if we go back to images, we can see that this node image is in use, meaning we're now using it inside this container. Now, if we hover over this, we get lots of different options over here. We can stop the container, restart the container. We can delete it, but also we can enter into a command line interface to interact with that container as well. So I could interact with that Linux environment and also use node as well inside here. So it's gonna open up a terminal and I can use any Linux commands inside here, for example, ls to list out the contents of the current directory, the root directory I'm in, and we can see all of those folders here. I can also use node by tapping node, and it says welcome to node version 17.4. So that's the version of node installed, and I could type now any kind of node commands inside this interactive terminal. So I could say, for example, five plus 10, and that's gonna give me 15, right? So this is fine, but on its own, it's kind of useless, right? So what I'd like to do is use this now as a parent image inside our own images that we make ourselves, right? So remember, I said the images are made up of layers and this parent image would be the first layer in our own image. So then we'd have the correct node version running for it. And then we'd build up additional layers on top of that, like copying in our source code to the image, installing dependencies to the image, etc. So next up, we'll see how to create our own image using a node image as a parent image, but we might pull a different version of the node image just to specify a specific Linux distribution, Alpine, and also a specific node version as well. Now, to do all that, we're gonna to need to use what's called a Docker file, and we're gonna talk about that in the next lesson.